You know it's this. Take a perk and talk it and see. Money swallowing like six. Did it perfect to the kid. Got a million who's single, my hate and nothing better. Put on the road, I just win. I know we got a million dollars to double that shit and I chip it again. Hello and welcome back, fellow anime lovers, to Manga Muse. I am delighted to have you join us once again in the world of fanfiction and fantasy. This is the third part of, What If Deku Meets Sonic? Special note, this fanfic is written and a masterpiece of Sonic Speed 546 on fanfiction.net. Do check and support the author too. Now smash the like, share and subscribe button for more. Also press the bell icon so that you never miss such great parts. Thanks for the introduction. Now let's dive into the world. As Classic Sonic made it to the starting line, Vlad King pressed a button on the monitor he was holding which activated the measuring device that was at the side of the finish line. Get ready runners. Although Vlad King didn't show it, he was very excited and interested to see what Maurice could do despite his small size and age, especially considering he got second place. Classic Sonic got into a runner's position before closing his eyes to clear his mind, he only needed to think of one thing. And that was to go fast. On your marks. Get set. Go. Classic Sonic's eyes shot open as he took off like a rocket. He could feel the high winds brushing against his face and quills as he reached the finish line digging his heels into the ground to stop. For the class watching, they only saw a blue blur run through which was followed by a huge gust of wind which almost pushed the students to the ground. Classic Sonic turned around and saw the class staring at him with a mixture of awe, surprise and shock. 0.09 milliseconds. Right when the time was announced, the entire class proceeded to fall on the floor out of shock. That's some crazy speed. A boy with a bandana on his head exclaimed. I wonder if he's faster than All Might. A girl with Forrest's green hair wondered. What? No way. The boy with a thought bubble for a head interjected. See? I told y'all not to underestimate him. Pony said, happy she proved them wrong. A familiar ghost girl looked at Classic Sonic with surprise, before she smiled at him. Classic Sonic noticed and gave a smile back. Well done Maurice. You see students. That was a perfect example on what to do during this test and the others, to try your absolute best and go plus ultra. Vlad King stated. As the next tests for the 50 meter dash went on, Classic Sonic saw some amazing quirks in action. A girl with vines for hair used her vines to quickly make it across the finish line, while a black-haired boy turned his legs into spiral like tornadoes to make it across at a high speed most likely getting second in a 50-meter dash behind Classic Sonic. As Classic Sonic watched the next person go, he heard a voice behind him, Excuse me. The young Sonic turned around to find that lanky blonde boy with blue eyes looking down at him. Hey, you're Maurice right? I'm Manoma Nito, and I gotta say that was a neat stunt you pulled back there, you're really fast. The boy now know as Manoma complimented. Classic Sonic flashed him a smile before giving him a thumbs up. Not much of a talker are you? Well it looks like I'm up next. It was nice meeting you. Manoma continued as he held out his hand to shake with Classic Sonic. Classic Sonic looked at the gesture for a moment before deciding to shake it. Something was off though, as the boy shook his hand he was touching his fingers on Classic Sonic's peach skin just above his glove, and the smile that the boy gave was almost malicious. The boy then walked away toward the starting line. Classic Sonic eyed him suspiciously before another presence made themselves known. Hey, what did Manoma want with you? Classic Sonic turned around to find an orange-haired girl talking to him. She had Torx-colored eyes, and had messy orange hair that was put into a ponytail. Classic Sonic responded by shrugging his shoulders, well considering how fast you are. I think it's safe to say he made contact with you only to copy your quirk, the red head revealed. The blue hedgehog looked at her with surprise. He could do that. But wait, no. Classic Sonic didn't have a quirk, 
he was just always this fast without any reason explaining why. So this Monoma's copy quirk shouldn't be able to copy his speed right? This theory only left the hedgehog scratching his head. She sighed, yeah I had a feeling he did, I've known him since we were children so I've always been putting up with his shenanigans, the girl continued as both she and classic Sonic turned to the blonde boy about to take off. He had a confident smirk plastered on his face as he waited for the signal to go. On your mark. Get set. Go. Manoma took off expecting to have already made it to the other side in the blink of an eye. But what he didn't expect was to fall flat on his face. The confused boy then lifted his face off the ground. Wait what? B but I could have swore I copied his, oh forget it, Manoma huffed as he jogged to the finish line at a moderate pace. Huh. That's strange. Perhaps he missed your skin. You are wearing gloves after all, the girl guessed. Classic Sonic nodded but deep down knew Manoma had actually touched his arm, and if he supposed, copying Quirk, didn't work on him, then it basically confirmed to Classic Sonic that he's and his future self super speed and other abilities were not Quirks. The next test was a ball throwing test, some students didn't have the right Quirks for this so they simply threw as strong as they could while other used their Quirks, the orange haired girl from before tossed the ball into the air before enlarging her hands as she smacked the ball into the far distance giving her an impressive score of 522 meters. The ghost girl that classic Sonic sat next to simply used her telekinesis to lift the ball with her mind as it glowed purple before she sent it into the sky giving her a score of infinity. When classic Sonic's turn was up, he was thinking on what to do before he visited down memory lane. Right after classic Sonic had freed Little Planet from Dr. Robotnik's enslavement, Robotnik had tried fleeing away with one of the time stones on his egg mobile. Because the blue hedgehog couldn't let Robotnik get away with such a powerful artifact, he grabbed a nearby rock before curling into a ball and spinning at high speeds like he would do to charge a spin dash, Classic Sonic then uncurled with the rock before throwing it at Robotnik and with the momentum of the spin, he ended up hitting him dead on from quite the distance causing his egg mobile to explode. Classic Sonic figured he could do the same thing here with the ball, so he grabbed it before curing up into a ball and started to spin rapidly, for a few seconds Classic Sonic was a spinning ball as the rest of the class and Vlad King watched in wonder before the hedgehog suddenly uncurled and hurled the ball into the air. The hall soared through the sky before finally landing. Vlad King looked at the monitor where it read 887.6 meters, feeling impressed from the creativity and distance. He showed Classic Sonic his score where he was met back with a thumbs up. Vlad King did wonder though, this boy was only 11 years old and was already ridiculously fast and showed lots of potential, how fast could he go if he was an adult? During the other tests Classic Sonic succeeded like the repeating side steps while failing in others like the grip test. But he did get entertained as he watched a boy covered in brown fur with glasses on easily crush the device. After the final test was finished all of class, 1B were now grouped together eager to hear their scores. Good job everyone. You all did exceptionally well. As of beating 1A, some scores were beaten while others were not. Vlad King began. But do not fret, the year has only just began so there will be plenty of time to improve. Vlad King stated as he pressed a button on the monitor where a hologram was displayed. Classic Sonic looked for his fake name only to find it at the very top at first place. The ecstatic blue hedgehog jumped before putting a hand on his hip and wagging his finger as a sort of victory dance. As of right now you are all dismissed, make sure to come back tomorrow with plenty of energy. Vlad King said before walking back into the building. Classic Sonic then walked back into the changing room with the rest of the boys quickly changing out of the gym uniform before changing back into the school uniform that he loathed so much. He then walked through the halls to see if he could find his future self. Hey Maurice. Wait up. A voice called out from behind. Classic Sonic turned around to find a familiar horned girl running up to him, Hi Maurice. I saw you up ahead and wanted to say hi. I also thought you did great today. Pony beamed while smiling. 
The small hedgehog grinned at her before taking a small notepad and pencil out of backpack, he scribbled something on it before handing it to her, thanks. I thought you did great as well. The sticky note read. You really think so? Ah thanks Maurice. Pony thanked with a cheeky smile while classic Sonic giving her a nod in return. Oh hey. I was wondering. But do you want to walk home today with me today? Now that we're friends. Pony asked, her big blue eyes sparkling. Classic Sonic looked at her surprised before writing something once again and handing it to her. Sure. I don't see why not. All right. What are we waiting for? Let's go. Pony exclaimed. Classic Sonic only chuckled at the girl's bubbly personality. Perhaps if he ran into his older self he could introduce the two. I'm so tired. Midoriya yawned, rubbing his eyes. Heh, did that big smooch from Recovery Girl really drain you that much? Sonic teased, causing the green-haired boy to get flustered. What ash? No. I, I mean, yeah, that's how her quirk works you know. Midoriya grumbled gaining a snicker from the blue hedgehog. After the quirk assessment test, Sonic had waited outside of Recovery Girl's office for Izuku's broken finger to get fixed up. I have to be honest though, getting kissed was a little frightening, Midoriya admitted while scratching the back of his neck nervously. Was that why I could hear you screaming in there from outside her office? Sonic asked with a grin. I was starting to think you were getting murdered in there or something. I, I was just a little surprised. That all? Midoriya stuttered. Surii, Sonic continued to tease. As the two students continued to walk towards the entrance of U.A, someone from behind put their hand on Midoriya's shoulder. Midoriya turned his head to find Ida. Oh, hey there Ida. Hello Midoriya, and hello to you too Sonic, Ida said, looking down at Sonic, hey Ida, what's up? Sonic replied. Nothing much, just came to see how Midoriya's broken finger is doing. Oh. It's doing fine. Thanks to Recovery Girl. Midoriya smiled while holding up his bandaged finger. That's great to hear, so, what do you both think about our teacher? Ida asked. Pfffff, I think he's too much of a grouch if you ask me, Sonic replied with no hesitation. I, I well, I think H he has great goal in turning us into heroes B but he can be a little harsh, Midoriya stammered. I have to agree to some extent. Although I admire Mr. Aizawa's drive, his methods are a bit, questionable. Ida stated. You can say that again. Hey. Sonic. Wait up you three, a voice yelled out from behind them. The three of them turned to find Urarika jogging towards them. Are you going to the station? I'll join you guys. Gravity girl. Sonic said with surprise. Hey you're the infinity girl. Ida realized as Urarika reached the three. Hi. I'm Achiko Urarika. Urarika introduced herself. Let's see, I already know who you are Sonic, you're Tenya Ida, and your name is, Deku right? Midoriya. The brown-haired girl guessed. D. Deku. Midoriya exclaimed with a look of noticeable fear on his face. Uh yeah right? Isn't that what Bakugo called you during the fitness test? Urarika questioned. Oh, WLUC, Izuku is my actual name. Deku is just a name Kaken calls me to make fun of me, Midoriya explained with a slight blush on his face. Sonic's ears perked up when he heard the name, Kaken. Didn't Izuku say to Sonic before they entered class that he was scarred of someone named Kaken? And if Midoriya was referring to Bakugo as Kaken then that would mean he was the old mean friend Izuku was referring to, which kind of makes sense now that Sonic thought about it. Wait a minute. Boom Boy is Kaken. Sonic asked Midoriya with shock. Midoriya's face went pale while Urarika and Ida looked at the blue hedgehog confused Boom Boy. Urarika repeated, while slightly tilting her head. It's a nickname I gave to Bakugo, Sonic replied. 
Well I think name calling is very immature Sonic. Ida said with a hint of sternness while putting his hands on his hips. Eh to be fair, he's always calling me a blue mouse, Sonic said with a shrug. Why is Kakin calling you a blue mouse? Midoriya asked. Ever since me and my little brother saved he's ungrateful but from that sludge villain he's been holding a grudge against me. Sonic explained. Wait, you saved him from a villain? Ida said surprised. Yeah. And the day after, he and his cronies almost started a fight between me and my little brother because of it. Sonic ranted. That's awful. Eurarika exclaimed with a gasp. The nerve of that boy. From the moment I got into an argument with him today, I knew he was trouble. Ida stated. Yeah that sounds like something Kakin would be mad over, Midoriya said with a sigh. Sonic nodded. This appeared to explain whatever grudge Bakugo had with Izuku. And maybe why they were both at the sludge villain attack. Sonic knew Midoriya was previously quirkless until he received one for all from Toshinori. Which is why Bakugo demanded an explanation from him when he saw Izuku with a quirk. The only question Sonic had was why was Midoriya friends with a guy like that? The guy himself looked like he didn't even want to be friends with Midoriya. Anyway, but do you know what? I like Deku. It sounds awesome. Plus, I think it sounds kind of cute. Eurarika exclaimed changing the subject with a smile. DKU it is. Midoriya quickly said with a reddened face. Really? Just like that? But what about everything you just said? Ida confusingly asked while Sonic chuckled to himself. As the four continued to talk while walking, the three humans passed through the entrance while Sonic stayed back at the entrance gate which didn't go unnoticed by Midoriya. Huh? Sonic aren't you coming? Sorry can't, I have to wait here for my little brother, Sonic explained. Wait, your little brother also goes to you.a. Tenya asked, briefly surprised. Sonic nodded, that's right. He's also in the hero course but in class, 1b. Sonic stated. I've met him before. He and Sonic look exactly the same with the same quirk but with a few key differences. Midoriya exclaimed. Well I wouldn't say the exact same, Sonic interjected. Huh actually, I think I remember seeing him back right before the entrance exam behind you Sonic, Eurarika pondered, putting a finger to her chin. I didn't get to talk to him because I didn't want to risk not making it on time to the exam. So there's someone else with a speed quirk in the hero course. Ida muttered to himself while stroking his chin. Okay well, see you tomorrow Sonic. Midoriya waved, turning around. As he made it to U.A's gate he came to a stop. Oh oh, and Sonic. Sonic hummed, hmm. Yeah what's up? Th thanks, not just for sticking up for me against Mr. Aizawa but for also protecting me against Kaken. Izuku spoke. It means a lot. Oh. Yeah of course. Couldn't just let Boom Boy get the jump on you like that. Sonic chuckled. Izuku gave a meek laugh, heh, right, well, see you tomorrow Sonic, the three human students waved before they walked away eventually disappearing out of sight. Now that he was alone, Sonic waited by the entrance tapping his foot impatiently. A good ten minutes went by before Sonic spotted his past self walking out the entrance. Sonic however raised a brow when he saw that classic Sonic wasn't alone. He was talking to a long-haired blonde girl with big blue eyes. She has two large horns on the top of her head and also had hooves for feet. Classic Sonic spotted his future self up ahead and waved to him. He then picked up his pace slightly leaving the hooved girl behind before reaching Sonic. Hey buddy. How did your first day go for you? Sonic asked while he reached out and rubbed the top of Classic Sonic's head, messing up his quills. Classic Sonic shook his head fixing his tousled quills before he gave him a thumbs up right before the girl he was talking to came up behind him. Um Maurice? I don't know if it's just me but I'm seeing double of you. The blonde girl said, 
a southern accent could be noticeably heard. Maurice, who's your new friend? Sonic asked his younger self. Oh how rude of me. I'm Pony Tsunatori. Say you wouldn't happen to be related to Maurice would you? Pony Curiosity asked. Bingo. I'm Sonic. And I'm my little buddy's older. Brother. Sonic replied while slinging an arm over his past self, I'm sure you can see the similarities. Pony giggled, no doubt about it. I can hardly tell you two apart. So how did you two happen to meet? Sonic asked. Heh, funny story actually. I was about to get crushed by some falling concrete before Maurice here swooped in and saved me. Pony exclaimed. Oh you're the person Maurice told me about that day. Sonic realized while receiving a slight embarrassed nod from her. Classic Sonic then pointed a thumb behind him signaling something to Pony, huh? Oh yeah. Me and Maurice were going to walk home together. Pony excitingly exclaimed. Oh really? I hope you don't mind me tagging along. Sonic said. Yeah of course not. The three of them then walked home where Sonic and Pony would talk to each other while classic Sonic would either nod or shake his head or would just write something down to speak his thoughts. They would talk about random things like either what happened today in class for them or their quirks. Sonic learned that Pony could shoot the horns off her head before they would quickly regrow again. Pony eventually split off from the two going down a different road. Soon the two blue hedgehogs made it back to Tashinori's house. Well I wouldn't say today was that bad despite getting a moody teacher, Sonic stated while closing the door behind him. Oh and your girlfriend seems pretty nice Sonic. Classic Sonic nodded his head before realizing what his future self said and then begun to profusely shake his head and swaying his arms in a no way. Gesture. Relax I'm just kidding. Sonic said while laughing at Classic Sonic's reaction. Considering I'm you. I think we both know how much we're not into dating, Sonic stated. Despite how much Amy wants it to be not true, Sonic muttered under his breath. Actually, speaking of Amy. I wonder how she's doing. In fact. I wonder how all of our friends are doing. Sonic said aloud, classic Sonic pondered this question, he too wondered what happened to his friends after what happened with the Time Eater. I do miss them a lot. I mean heck. I'm even starting to miss Shadow of all people. Sonic exclaimed loudly while throwing his arms up in the air. Classic Sonic had a frown on his face thinking and missing his versions of Tails, Knuckles and Amy. They were probably also missing the Sonics as well. Wondering where on earth the two Sonics vanished to after the Time Eater blew up. Despite how much fun this super-powered world was, both of the Sonics would eventually want to find a way back to their world. I wonder how we can get back to our world. We do already have all of the Chaos Emeralds so maybe if we did dash. Before Sonic could finish, the front door opened revealing Tashinori holding up a key. Ah, uh, I see you two are already here. How was both of your guys' first days? Tashinori asked. Eh, could have gone better. Just wish I didn't get an over the top stern teacher, Sonic responded. And on top of that, I had to tackle Boom Boy into the ground before he could hurt Midoriya. I'm sure you enjoyed that little show from around the corner, didn't you, Tashi? Sonic grinned. Tashinori froze as he was putting his keys into the bowl, heh heh, so you spotted me, huh? I guess I wasn't being as quiet as I thought. Here's the secret it's the ears. Sonic said, twitching the ears on top of his head. Right, I forgot you have good hearing. But yes, Aizawa can be a bit, too serious but he's only doing what he thinks is the best for his class despite his strange way, Tashinori stated before turning to classic Sonic. How about you young Maurice? How was Vlad King? Classic Sonic responded by shrugging his shoulders. He thought his teacher was alright and probably wasn't as bad as what his future self had said about his own teacher. I'm not close to Vlad but from what I've heard and seen, he's a very compassionate yet competitive man and a great pro hero as well. Tashinori claimed. 
and probably a million times better than Mr. Grumpy Pants, Sonic grumbled while crossing his arms. Well now you both know what to expect from your teachers. Oh. And prepare yourselves. The real test begins tomorrow during hero training. Toshinori revealed with a smirk. What's happening tomorrow? Sonic asked, a bit curious. Sorry young Sonic can't say. Now, how about I WHP up some chili dogs? Toshinori asked with a small grin which resulted in both of the hedgehogs completely forgetting about what Toshinori had just said prior. I am here. All Might barging thought the door of class, 1B started the students at first before they all began all began to freak out at being in front of the number one hero. OMG it's All Might. It's really him. If All Might's teaching US then this is going to be awesome. I wonder what we will be doing. Maybe we will be destroying robots again like from the exam. So the rumors were true, All Might really is teaching at Udata, the ghost girl known as Reiko said to herself earning a side glance from classic Sonic. Because class, 1B had their hero training as their first class unlike class, 1A. That meant classic Sonic was first to find out what the real test was. Welcome class, 1B to hero training which is arguably the most important class of the day. In here you will learn what it means and takes to be a hero. But just like every hero, you all need to look dashing. All of sudden, 19 cases appeared side by side from the classroom wall with a different green number printed on each one. These are the hero costumes that were designed based off your quirks and preferences that you put on your hero form. Each of your costumes represents your quirk but more importantly, represents you. The class then erupted into a mixture of gasps and cheers. Classic Sonic could even hear Pony squealing out of too much excitement from just a few desks up ahead. Now hurry and get your hero costumes on. And then get your butts over to training ground beta. Yes sir. The whole class replied in unison before scrambling out of their seats to get their hero cases. Classic Sonic was the first one out the door since he didn't have a briefcase. What he was going to wear was already on him. Training Ground, Beta After some time, Classic Sonic walked out of the tunnel to the Mock City where All Might was waiting only wearing his white gloves and signature red shoes. Both of the Sonics decided they didn't need a flashy costume. Classic Sonic looked around only to realize he was the first one out. Ah uh, young Maurice, I see you made it pretty early, which is great. Heroes need to be always on time. Either to stop a villain or perhaps a building on fire. All Might exclaimed. All Might looked towards the tunnel to see if any of the students were starting to come out only to no avail before leaning down on one knee to the blue hedgehog. I do have to say though I've always thought you and young Sonic had some sweet kicks. Where did you get those shoes from? All Might asked, most likely to kill some time. Before Classic Sonic could give some sort of answer to the symbol of peace. A bunch of loud footsteps could be heard from within the tunnel which caught the attention of All Might and Classic Sonic, where the both found all of class, 1B in their hero costumes walking together. Wow! You all look stunning. Just like actual pro heroes. All Might said aloud to the class while Classic Sonic ran over to the rest of the class from All Might. But the costume doesn't make the hero. Which is why we are all out here today. Sir. If I may ask but, what exactly will we be doing? A ginger-haired girl named Kendo asked which Classic Sonic quickly realized she was the same girl who warned him about Monoma. I was just about to get to that. All Might answered. You see. Most run-ons with evil villains happens within closed spaces like secret lairs, subway trains, or even your own homes. Villains love to hide in the shadows. So today. Instead of fighting against robots you all will be fighting each other on two-on-two -on -two indoor battles. The class started to murmur with each other some mixed on their thoughts about having to fight each other for the training today. Classic Sonic scratched his chin, 
He's been in many tussles before but being against a bunch of super-powered teenagers was new to him. Although he had fought against a time monster that was being controlled by two Dr. Robotniks, so having to battle some superheroes in the making shouldn't be too strong. All right you newbies. This is how it's going to go. All Might began before pulling out a small notebook, he cleared his throat before reading, the dastardly villains have just robbed a bank with a bag full of cash. And it is up to the heroes to stop them in their tracks. The heroes win by either capturing the villains. Or by recovering the bag of cash and returning it to the vault it was stolen from. Likewise, the villains win by capturing the heroes or by making their escape out of the bank with the cash in hand. Are there any questions? All might question the class. Sir, what are the rules so we can keep this training course as pure as possible? A girl who had vines for hair asked. All Might blinked at the unusual question, uh well, the first rule is obviously no killing or anything lethal of that matter. Another rule for the heroes is to limit any collateral damage as much as possible. Okay, thank you for asking my question sir, she bowed. No problem. Now. We'll be drawing lots to decide the teams of twos. All Might stated while holding a yellow box. All Might then drew out two slips of paper out of the box and then proceeded to call out the random names on the slips for teams. He did this procedure over and over again before he called out Classic Sonic's fake name. Team C will be Pony Tsunatori. And Maurice Hedgehog. Classic Sonic's eyes widened in surprise hearing who his teammate was going to be. He was expecting to be paired up with someone he didn't know but he wasn't complaining. The small blue hedgehog then looked around the class for his newly befriended bubbly human before all of a sudden being picked up and hugged from behind. What are the odds of us being on the same team Maurice? Let's make sure we do our best partner. Pony excitingly exclaimed before putting the hedgehog down allowing classic Sonic to get a look at her hero costume. She was wearing an orange skin-tight shirt with paler marking around where her chest and stomach with matching colored pants, she also wore a belt around her lower torso as well as her boots, on the top of her head was a horse halt with lead rope dangling from the back. Classic Sonic had a small tint of red on his cheeks because of the surprised hug from behind before shaking his head, making them disappear. He then awkwardly rubbed the back of his quills while giving Pony a cheeky smile. Now that we got the teams made. It's time we did our first draw to see which two teams will be going head to head first. All Might began while putting one hand into a box that said heroes and another one that said villains. The first two teams will be these guys. All Might shouted while holding up two ball on each hand that had the letters C and D. Team C will be the heroes. While Team D will be the villains. Everyone else can head to the monitor room to watch. Oh. Well uh, I guess we'll be going first huh Maurice? Pony asked sounding a bit nervous while Classic Sonic gave a slight nod. But I wonder who we will be facing. That would be us, a feminine voice said from behind the duo. Classic Sonic and Pony turned around to find Team D behind them. The one who spoke up was the vine-haired girl from before and the person right next to her was the same lanky blonde boy who tried to copy classic Sonic speed otherwise known as Nido Manoma. Greetings, my name is Ibra Shiyazaki, it is a blessing to meet you both, Ibra introduced herself. The vine-haired girl was wearing a white rob for her costume much like someone from ancient Greek times would wear, while Manoma was wearing a tuxedo with a sky-blue tie. Ah uh, it's a blessing to meet you as well. Pony nervously replied. Yes it is, I just hope there won't be any strong feelings when we beat you, Manoma carelessly replied with a smirk. Uh what? Pony asked now confused. When we inevitably beat you, I hope there won't be any tension between us, Manoma said again with an insensitive tone. Before Pony could respond a vine quickly wrapped around Manoma's mouth silencing the blonde with a muffled gasp coming from Manoma. Please excuse my teammate's foul mouth and his sinful words, God will certainly make him repent. Ibra said while giving Manoma a side glare making Manoma gulp. Villains you can go on ahead inside and prepare yourself, 
your starting positions will be in the open vault, you will have 5 minutes before the heroes are allowed in and then the battle will start. All Might announced gaining the attention of the two teams. Yes sir, Ibra replied while unwrapping the vines around Manoma's mouth before the two of them walked inside the fake bank building. HMP. That boy is too full of himself. Pony said with puffed out cheeks. Classic Sonic nodded while clenching his fists, he and Pony were going to show him just what they were capable of. Oh. And young Maurice. Take this pencil and piece of paper so you can strategize with your teammate. All Might said while handing Classic Sonic the items before walking off to the observation room. With the five minutes of prep beginning, Pony turned to her teammate. What's the first move partner? Classic Sonic looked down at the ground in thought. Perhaps just charge in and hope for the best, no that wouldn't work. Despite saving the world from Robotnik two or three times. This was still all relatively new to him. He was sure his future self would know what to do here. Which meant Classic Sonic would eventually know too, but maybe that was the problem. Maybe he was starting to get too reliant on his future self. So far ever since he ran into his older self in limbo up until now Classic Sonic been following his lead. Which made sense, why wouldn't you follow your older, more experienced and powerful self? It was a no-brainer. But perhaps too much of that was a bad thing. If Classic Sonic doesn't start to learn and make decisions for himself. Then he might accidentally undo the existence of his future self. Wasn't that how time travel worked? Any slight change to the past could dramatically change the future. That's how it worked on Little Planet. Not to mention he doubts his older self experienced going through the events of the Time Eater and getting sent to an unfamiliar world when he was in classic Sonic's shoes. Pony could notice the troubled look on her friend's face. He seemed to be really trying at coming up with a plan they could use. The blonde girl hummed to herself, Boo. I have an idea. Classic Sonic perked up. An idea, huh? He was all ears. Let's do the unexpected. She beamed. The young hedgehog raised a brow. Do the unexpected? What did that mean? Pony. Giggled at Classic Sonic's confused expression, what I mean is everyone in class knows you're super fast from the quirk assessment test right? She asked, receiving a nod. So, Shiazaki and Minoma will probably be expecting us, mainly you to rush in and try to overwhelm them with your speed. Instead let's be caution and move in slowly in case they set up a trap for us. Pony explained. We can maybe split up too. I can go in through one of the windows on the side of the building while you go through the front. Classic Sonic pondered this before smiling and nodding. He then took the pencil and piece of paper All Might gave him before writing on it. After finishing he gave it to Pony. Sounds like a deal. I think we can actually pull this, do the unexpected, plan off. Pony laughed, I know right. She smiled brightly, but for some reason that smile then faltered. Still there but not the same usual joyful smile classic Sonic became accustomed to. I, I actually take these words more into heart than people realize. Classic Sonic tilted his head before writing something and handing it to Pony. What do you mean? Pony stared at the note before turning to Classic Sonic with a small smile, T there for my hero. My mom. Classic Sonic's eyes slightly widened. From the sound of her voice he was already assuming the worst. However Pony could easily guess what the blue hedgehog was thinking. Oh gosh. Don't worry she's not dead Maurice. Pony snorted. Classic Sonic gave a sigh of relief. But, it's been almost a year since I've seen her or my family. I'm a foreign exchange student from the U.S. If you couldn't tell already by my accent, she gave a small giggle. Classic Sonic chuckled, according to the fake documents he and Sonic were given he was also an exchange student from America. He guessed you could say that was something the two had in common. I was sent here in advance to prepare and get accustomed to living life in Japan. Learning about its culture, 
history, and people so that I'll be ready for you, Dada, she explained. But for the first couple of months I was terribly homesick, I would cry every night wanting to go home. It felt almost unbearable to be without my family. Pony spoke, sitting down on the curb. Maurice, have you ever missed home so much before? Classic Sonic stood there for a moment before nodding. He could easily relate, he missed not just his home but his friends. He and his older self just discussed this yesterday. The only difference was instead of being a plane ticket away he was light years if not universes away from home. But another difference the two had was classic Sonic didn't come to this unknown world alone, accompanied by himself ironic enough. While Pony came here without anyone but herself to a foreign land that might as well be a new world to her. A warm smile came to Pony, out of everyone in my family it's my mom I miss the most. She's the most important person in my life. Classic Sonic sat down on the curb next to her. Leaning forward with his arms resting on his legs. Not just that, but the greatest pro hero ever. Cow Lady. The Stampede of Justice. She beamed, putting a hand out forward while moving it to the side like she was creating the very words. Classic Sonic gave her an amused look. PFFF I know really silly. But it's true, she's my hero and I want to be just like her when I become one too. Pony pledged as she stood up, she always told me to do the unexpected when I was growing up. So I did the unexpected and stuck it out here without giving in to my homesickness. Even though mom offered that I could come back home. I made a decision for myself and decided to stay so I could go to U.A to learn how to become an amazing hero just like my mom. Pony exclaimed, her eyes shining. And I'm glad I did, because then I never would have met you. She smiled brightly once more. Classic Sonic stared at her in awe. Touched at her words. His eyes then traveled to the ground in thought. Pony was right. It's okay to have someone to follow behind and guide you. His future self now kind of acted like his role mode. But it's also necessary to make decisions for yourself. Decisions that will lead you into becoming someone just like your role model. Classic Sonic just needed to find a balance. With the rest of the time two had, they used to strategize. It wasn't long until All Might came back on the intercom. Remember. You guys are fighting each other. Don't do anything too hasty. Now without further ado, begin. All Might yelled from the intercom. Okay remember the plan. I'll sneak in through the side while you go head on through the front and distract them. Pony reminded. Classic Sonic gave a confident nod while giving her a thumbs up before Pony went around the building to find a window to sneak through. Classic Sonic rushed through the front doors before coming to stop in the middle of the bank's lobby. Classic Sonic slowly but carefully walked towards the front desks passing by the lounging chairs and ATMs that were next to the interior pillars just in case of a trap was waiting for him. According to the maps they were given, behind the front desks with the glass panels where people would deal with their money situation would be a door that lead to a long hallway with office rooms and branching hallways connected to it. It would then lead all the way to the back of the bank where the vault would be. The blue hedgehog came to a halt as he noticed large amounts of cracks on the floor in front of him. He didn't know why but it gave off a bad vibe to him. Noticing a nearby dime on the floor, he picked it up before flicking it with his thumb towards the cracks. Almost instantly as it landed tons of vines sprouted out from the ground below lashing out all around. Classic Sonic took a couple of steps back frightened. This was obviously a trap. And based on how quick those vines were moving. It was for someone fast. Stopping in his tracks, Classic Sonic heard a sound from above, he looked up to find multiple tendrils of vines heading straight at him. He instinctively jumped out of the way as the vines missed their target. He looked up to find Ibra 30 feet in the air above the young Sonic with her vine hair gripping around some of the pillars nearby so that she could try and get the surprise attack on him from above. Interesting, I expected you to rush in where you would then fall into my trap, but instead you took it slow despite your fast nature. 
Ibra said with amusement while lowering herself to ground level with her vines. Classic Sonic noticed she didn't have the money bag with her which meant Monoma must have had it, if Pony finds him then it's all up to her on how this battle will end. Classic Sonic smirked before charging up a spin dash as he shot towards Ibra. The vines on her head extended in front of her and grew into a large vine wall for protection as Classic Sonic collided into it. Ibra expressionless face turned into that of shock as Classic Sonic easily cut right through the vine wall with his sharp quills, she quickly ducked right as Classic Sonic shot right over her. The blue hedgehog uncurled midair as his feet landed against the wall. Ibra quickly shot multiple vines at the hedgehog. Classic Sonic jumped off the wall into the air above the girl. But Ibra predicted this and one of her vines wrapped around one of the blue hedgehog's legs while he was still midair before slamming him down into the ground. Ibra then swung the blue hedgehog throwing him straight through one of the glass panels which shattered upon impact before Classic Sonic hit the wall behind it with a loud thud. Classic Sonic fell to one knee as he rubbed his head dazed from the throw. I hate to act like a sinful villain, but it is required. Classic Sonic glanced to his right to the door that would lead him to the vault where Monoma and possibly Pony would be. Classic Sonic then made a break for it to try and escape from this fight even though he was still disoriented from the throw. Not so fast, Ibra coldly spoke before launching a wall of vines that collided into the wall in between the door and Classic Sonic. She then launched another wall of vines to the left of the blue hedgehog trapping him between two walls of vines and herself. Classic Sonic could see Ibra slowly walking towards him with a cold face through one of the other glass panels. Classic Sonic backed up to the wall behind him before an idea popped into his head. He grinned before turning around and at a fast speed ran up the side of the wall surprising the vine-haired girl. He then jumped off the wall towards the girl at breakneck speeds. Ibra quickly shot more vines at him only for Classic Sonic to curl into a ball midair where the vines would either be deflected off or would get cut into pieces by his quills. Classic Sonic uncurled before kicking the side of Ibra's face which sent her tumbling to the ground a few feet away from him. Ibra got up while having a hand on the side of her face where she got kicked. She unexpectedly sent her vines burrowing through the ground. Classic Sonic looked at her puzzled before he could feel rumbling beneath him. He looked down right as crack started to form on the floor. He quickly sped out of the way as a large cluster of vines shot up from the spot where he just was. Where's Monoma? Pony quietly asked herself as she peeped around the corner. While Classic Sonic was busy with Ibra, Pony was steadily creeping through the halls on a lookout for Monoma and not wanting him to get the jump on her and copy her quirk. She continued to silently walk through the hallway as she passed by a janitor's closet. Right when she did though, the door flung straight open as Monoma charged out of it. Got you. Monoma yelled as he reached towards Pony in attempt to copy her quirk. Pony turned her head in time to dodge Monoma hand that just grazed her arm. But that was all Monoma needed as two large horns identical to Pony's grew on his head. Pony then noticed in Monoma's right hand was the money bag containing presumably fake cash. My, this is an interesting quirk, Monoma began while feeling his horns on his head. Let's see what it can do. Monoma then shot the horns off his head towards Pony who in time dodged the attack before sending her own horns at him. They both began to send horns and dodge each other's over and over again. Pony shot her horns towards Monoma feet which made him stumble. Seeing an opportunity, Pony shot two more horns that ended pining Monoma to the wall. You may have my quirk. But you have no experience on using it. Pony said confidently. Monoma gritted his teeth as he ripped the horns off the wall that had pinned him. He was just about to attack before the horns on his head shrink down before disappearing completely. Shoot, my time's up. Guess that's my K to leave. Monoma waved before taking off down the hallway. Hey! Get back here! Pony yelled as she chased after him. Classic Sonic dodged vine after vine as he ran around Ibra who was starting to get frustrated after missing the swift hedgehog over and over again. 
Classic Sonic then did a backflip over a Vine WHP before doing a spin dash and hitting Ibra straight in the chest knocking the wind out of her. Ibra painfully got up, she had tears throughout her white rob and looked worn out. Before either she or Classic Sonic could do anything else. The door behind the front desk flew open revealing Monoma with the money bag in hand. Ibera. Make a path for me to the exit. Tsunatori is right on my ta dash. Before Monoma could finish, Pony tackled him from behind as the both of them flew straight through one of the other glass panels landing on floor from the other side of the front desks. They both began to wrestle each other on the floor for the bag. Ibra shot multiple vines at Pony to pull her off Monoma but Classic Sonic rushed toward and jumped up and cut the vines with his quills. Now seeing his chance with a distracted Classic Sonic who had his attention on Ibra. Monoma pushed Pony off of him before making a beeline towards Classic Sonic with the money bag in hand. Maurice look out. Pony shouted out to Classic Sonic. Classic Sonic turned to the oncoming Monoma but it was too late as Monoma put a hand on Classic Sonic's head before pushing him down to the ground strong. Ha! Monoma's about to get a whole lot faster. This is over. Monoma gloated as he turned towards the exit. Monoma had expected to run at high speeds but instead ended falling on the ground. W what? Again. Monoma yelled out on the ground gaining the attention of his teammate. Monoma what's wrong? Why aren't you running? Ibra asked. I, I don't know. This happened before back at the quirk assessment test. Monoma frantically said before sending a glare at Classic Sonic. You. At first I thought my quirk didn't work on you because of your gloves. But this confirms it. Monoma yelled while pointing at Classic Sonic who was looking at him confused. So tell me, why can't I copy your quirk? Can't, copy, Morris's quirk. Pony confusingly murmured. In the observation room, All Might was tensed as he listened to the conversation in the back through the earpiece he had on. None of the other students could hear them but only see them through the monitor. Why didn't I see this coming? Of course young Monoma's quirk doesn't work on him, it's because young Maurice doesn't have a quirk to copy. All Might thought. He and young Sonic are from another world where quirks never appeared. Oh no, young Sonic. I'm sure he would get on Aizawa's nerves to the point where he would use his quirk on him. But what would happen if Aizawa erasure quirk didn't work on Sonic? Aizawa would get suspicious, and suspicious leads to investigation and investigation leads to the truth getting out. All might continue to worriedly think. None of the other students noticed but the ghost-like girl Reiko noticed how tensed All Might looked, she was thinking it was because of something happening in the battle. She wasn't too close to Maurice but had internally appreciated it when he chose to sit next to her. So she was slightly worried about something happening in the fight. Uh sir. Are you okay? You look a little frightened, Reiko asked him. H huh. Oh young Reiko. Yes. I am alright. Nothing to worry about. All Might replied while forcing a smile. Okay whatever you say man. Reiko just decided to let him be but wasn't fully convinced All Might was alright. He was definitely worried about something. But what could that something be? Only he knows. The room was silent as Monoma waited for an answer. Pony was looking between the two while Ibra saw this as an opportunity. She quickly sent a cluster of vines at Classic Sonic which he quickly jumped out of the way. This snapped Pony out of her thoughts as she sent multiple horns at Ibra. The vine-haired girl turned around and blocked the onslaught of horns by making a wall of vines. Monoma made a break for the exit which didn't get unnoticed by Classic Sonic. The blue hedgehog zoomed by Monoma swiping the bag out of. He's hand. No. Monoma yelled. Classic Sonic turned around and ran towards the door that lead to the vault so that Classic Sonic could bring the bag to and win the battle. Ibra formed a wall spanning from one end of the bank to the other in attempt to stop the blue blur. 
Pony saw this and yelled out. Maurice. Use my horns. Pony then shot multiple sets of horns towards the blue hedgehog. Classic Sonic nodded before jumping on the first horn and then the next getting higher and higher, Ibra shot lots of vines at Classic Sonic only for the blue blur to hop to the next horn and then some to dodge. At the highest horn in the air Classic Sonic jumped right when Ibra's vine smacked the horn he was on. He soared above Ibra and her makeshift wall before landing on the other side. Classic Sonic quickly jumped over the desk through the broken panel that he got thrown through before speeding through the door and down the hall to the vault. Yes. Go Maurice. Pony cheered. Classic Sonic zoomed down the hallway and around corners before finally coming across the bank's open vault. With one mighty throw. He threw the bag into the vault and. The hero team is the winner. All Might yelled from the speaker. All right class. Who can tell me who was the MVP of this match? The class looked around at each other waiting for one another to speak up before someone finally did, which happened to be the ginger-haired girl Kendo. This is a tough question, but I would have to say the MVP was Shiazaki, Kendo declared. Ibarra who was looking down at the floor in shame after her loss shot back up in surprise, really? W.I. me. Allow me to explain. Kendo said with a smile. You see, Monoma was doing okay until the last part of the battle where he let his frustration with whatever happened with Maurice get in the way which cost him the match. Kendo explained, Monoma only scoffed hearing this. As for Maurice, after we all seen what he can do from the quirk assessment test. It was obvious he was holding back throughout the match. I understand in not trying to hurt anybody too badly but it's also important to give it your all. Real pros must give it their all to stop a villain or to save somebody. Now, choosing between Shiazaki and Tsunatori as MVP was difficult. But the reason I believe it's not Pony was because of a flaw she made in her planning prior to the match. I might just be nitpicking but it would have been a smarter for Maurice to enter the bank from the side and go through the window instead of Pony since he would have been a lot closer to the bag of cash than the front and could have used his speed to overwhelm Manoma. Meanwhile Ibarra kept true to the role of the villain, taking any opportunity she had and put up quite the fight. That's why I believe she is the MVP, Kendo finished, gaining a bunch of surprised stares from the class. Classic Sonic scratched his head at the criticism. Monoma was muttering under his breath, while Pony and Ibra were blushing for two different reasons. Great observation young Kendo. You were spot on. Class used this battle as an example of what to expect when you're heroes. All Might stated to the class. Yes sir. Now on to the next teams. Classic Sonic sat back and watched as the other team's turns came up and went. His other friend Reiko was teamed up with a walking glue dispenser and they happened to be the villains unlike him and Pony. They ended up winning by the glue guy spewing glue on the ground and then having Reiko telekinetically throwing their opponents who happened to be a short shoulder length brunette girl who could spawn mushrooms, and her teammate who was the boy with a bandana on his head into the glue rendering them stuck before walking out of the bank with the money bag in hand therefore winning the battle. Classic Sonic at first thought the mushroom girl was the same girl his future self talked to before the entrance exam before quickly realizing the differences. When Reiko returned to the observation room Classic Sonic gave her a thumbs up which in turn made Reiko blush out of slight embarrassment which Classic Sonic couldn't see because of her mask. For her hero costume Reiko wore a pale purple robe that had a white furred collar, three dark straps around her waist and knee-high black socks. Other battles went and passed some being more interesting than others like one where a boy who could make solid air out of his mouth was teamed up with a white-haired boy who could move through literal darkness. Eventually about two hours later after Classic Sonic's battle. All the battles were finished. Splendid work everyone. You all did spectacular. All Might congratulated, and without a single major injury too. All Might sir. Will we be doing this every day? A girl with forest green hair and malachite colored eyes asked. Some days we will while other days we will be doing other things like for instance, rescue training. 
All Might exclaimed. Does that answer your question young Setsuna? Yes. Thank you sir. Of course. Now I bet all of y'all are hungry after such intense training. Lunch starts in a couple of minutes so I'll see all of you guys tomorrow. Stay healthy. All Might yelled as he ran off. Wow, isn't he amazing Maurice? Pony asked looking down to her small blue friend who gave her a happy nod in return. I don't know about you but that training made me hungry. Let's go to the cafeteria. Pony said. Classic Sonic gave her a thumbs up with a smile while also internally hoping that the cafeteria served chili dogs. After quickly going to the boys and girls locker room and changing back into the normal U.A. attire. Both Classic Sonic and Pony walked down the hall together to the cafeteria. Classic Sonic turned to look at her only to see that it looked like something was bothering her. He then wrote something on his notepad before tugging at her skirt. She looked down with a, hmm, before being handed the note. Is something wrong? Pony repeated the note. Oh oh, was it that obvious? Pony quietly asked. Classic Sonic responded by nodding his head with a smirk. Heh, well there is something, and it's actually about what happened during our battle. Pony said while scratching her head. The young Sonic's eyes widened a bit guessing what Pony was referring to. It's just that, Monoma was able to copy my quirk with just a graze so I was just wondering, why couldn't he copy yours? Pony said with a hint of guilt in her voice like if she didn't want to bring this question up. Classic Sonic stiffened, of course he knew why but he couldn't tell her the truth, one because she most likely wouldn't believe him and two she would most likely ask him more questions which could lead to the whole truth getting out. Classic Sonic started to think if he maybe should have told Sonic or even Tashinori about the Monoma situation during the quirk assessment test. Classic Sonic lied by shrugging his shoulders to show he had no idea. Oh, okay, I had a feeling you didn't know either, but never mind that. Let's go get some lunch. Pony replied going back to her cheery self. Classic Sonic gave a small smile while at the same time feeling bad about lying to his friend. Sonic, you know you can't be sleeping during class. Ida scolded. Hey give me a break. It's not my fault history class is so boring, Sonic complained while moving forward with the lunch line. Please have it, please have it, yes. Sonic exclaimed mentally. What Sonic could see down the food line were some delicious, tasty, appealing chili dogs. When he made it within. Arms reach Sonic hastily grabbed about five chili dogs before putting them on his tray. Uh wow Sonic, I didn't know you had quite the appetite. Ida said a bit surprised. Yup. To move at the speeds I go, I need a lot of energy. And what better power source than chili dogs? Sonic exclaimed while biting a piece out of one of the chili dogs. I see. Well let's head back to the table, Midoriya and Eurarika should be there already. Ida stated while grabbing his food. All right. Thanks for the food Mr. Robot Guy. Sonic called out to the pro hero lunch rush who flashed him a thumbs up in return. Both the two speedsters walked back to their table with food in hand, with Sonic spotting both Midoriya and Eurarika chatting to each other, Midoriya having a tint of red on his face most likely because he's talking to a girl alone. Oh oh hey. You guys are back. Midoriya said spotting Sonic and Ida. Yup. And we got our delicious food. Sonic replied. Whoa. That's a lot of chili dogs, Eurarika said taking note of the pile of chili dogs on Sonic's tray. Yeah, I already told Ida this but I need a lot of food to run at the speeds that I go at. Sonic stated. That's right. At the speeds you go at you would have to eat a lot of food to gain the necessary number of calories to live a healthy life. But at the speed Sonic goes at he would need to eat thousands or even millions of colonies only to burn them when he runs. I wondered if maybe, Midoriya rambled on through his muttering. Oh boy he's at it again. Eurarika said with a giggle. Oh Midoriya. Ida sighed. 
Sonic slapped a hand onto his face before shouting, Yo! 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 Midoriya! H huh! Oh, sorry, Midoriya said with a reddened face. Heh, so what do you guys think we will be doing during hero training? Urarika asked while digging into some of her rice. Beats me, I just hope we will be doing more than throwing a ball, Sonic replied while taking a bite out of his chili dog. I also wonder who will be teaching the hero course. Perhaps Mr. Aizawa? Ida asked making Urarika shiver. I don't want to sound mean but, Mr. Aizawa is a little scary. Urarika said in a hushed tone. Hey yeah he definitely can be, Midoriya said remembering what happened back at the quirk assessment test. Besides acting like a grumpy old cat, I think Aizawa dash. Oh hey Sonic. With a brow raised Sonic turned around to find Pony behind him with classic Sonic to her side who just like himself had a stack of chili dogs on his tray. Hey Pony. And hey little buddy. Sonic exclaimed rubbing the top of his past self's head. What are you guys doing here? Well you see, me and Maurice don't have anywhere to sit so we were wondering if we could sit here. Pony asked with a nervous laugh. Of course. Oh yeah guys. This is my new friend Pony and this is my little brother Maurice. Sonic introduced. Hello my name is Ida Tenya, it's a pleasure to meet your acquaintance. Ida stated while quickly getting up from his seat and bowing. He, I'm Ochako Urarika. Urarika beamed. H hi I'm Izuku Midoriya, Midoriya said with once again a slight reddened face. It's nice to meet you all. I'm Pony Tsunatori. But you can just call me Pony. I hope we can become great friends. Pony exclaimed while Classic Sonic gave a wave while carefully trying to not drop his tray. Pony and Classic Sonic sat down with Urarika staring at Classic Sonic in shock, wow. It's like there's double of you. It's like you both are the same person. Urarika said in amazement while looking back and forth between the two Sonics. If only you knew Gravity Girl. Sonic thought. Ha. I said the exact same thing. Pony exclaimed with a laugh, Classic Sonic also snickered at the comment. Both Sonics were gonna have to get used to people looking at them strangely when they were next to each other. And don't forget about their similar quirks too. Midoriya added in. Oh yeah, Pony I hope you don't mind me asking but what's your quirk? He asked. Ooh yeah. Does it have something to do with your horns? Urarika asked now curious. MMHP. My quick is called Horn Cannon. I can detach my horns from my head and shoot them just like a, well, cannon. Pony exclaimed. Immediately Midoriya's face brightened at hearing her quirk before barraging her with questions. That's so cool. How many sets of horns can you fire off? How much time does it take for your horns to grow back? Ooh. Can they take different sha dash? Urarika reached over the table before cupping her hand over Midoriya's mouth, the action made Midoriya stop in his track and made his face look like a tomato. Sorry about him, he can get a bit too excited about hearing other people's quirks. Urarika explained. Oh it's alright. In fact, I think it's pretty funny. Pony giggled which made Midoriya even more flustered. Say Pony, you and Maurice are from class, 1B correct? Ida asked. That's right. Pony answered with a nod. And if the scheduling is accurate then that would mean you and Maurice already did your hero training. Ida stated. Ooh. You got to tell us Pony. What do we do in hero training? Urarika exclaimed. And who's teaching it? Sonic also added in. I'm going to leave that to y'all to figure it out. I wouldn't want to spoil the surprise. Pony said with a giggle. And besides isn't it technically cheating if I told y'all? She does have a point, I guess it would be kind of cheating if she told us Ida spoke while adjusting his glasses. Ah uh, you're no fun Ida, Sonic replied before turning to his younger self, Maurice can you tell us? 
Classic Sonic with his arms crossed shook his head while smirking, denying and answering to his future self. Okay, okay, fair enough. I am here. Coming through the door like a hero. Just like with class, 1B, All Might busted through the classroom door surprising all of the students. I can't believe it's really All Might. So he is a teacher. This year is going to be totally awesome. Hey look. Is he wearing his Silver Age costume? Oh right. Toshi is teaching here. Now I can see why Pony and Maurice didn't want to spoil it. This is awesome. Sonic thought. Welcome to the most important class at U. High. All Might began. Here you will learn the basics of being a pro and what it means to fight in the nature of good. So let's get into it. Today's lesson will pull no punches. All Might exclaimed while holding up a card that said, Battle, for the whole class to see. Fight training. Bakugo exclaimed with a sadistic grin. Real combat? Midoriya said with a gulp. Yup, this is the real deal Midoriya. Sonic said. But one of the keys of being a hero is, looking good, and the classroom's wall, numbered briefcases popped out of the wall which held each student's costume. These were designed for you based on the quirk registration forms and the requests you sent in before school started. The whole class's level of excitement was through the roof as they all got up and hastily grabbed their briefcases. Sonic got up from his desk before stretching his arm and walking towards the door since just like his classic self he didn't have a briefcase. Now get over to Trading Ground Alpha. Yes sir. The class said in unison before scrambling out the door, Sonic was about to walk out the door before noticing Midoriya. Ha. Huh. You don't have a briefcase to Midoriya. Sonic said as he noticed Midoriya without one. Wah, oh. Oh no I don't, it's kind of embarrassing but my emma made my costume, Midoriya revealed unable to look Sonic in the eyes from the embarrassment. That's cool, can I see it? Sonic asked. Motioning to the yellow bag in his hand. Uh how about we wait until we get to the trading ground, Midoriya offered. You'll see mine and I'll see yours. Well, you've already seen mine but alright. Let's get going. Sonic exclaimed as the two friends walked out the massive classroom door. Training ground, Alpha. This is ironic All Might spoke with his hands on his hip. What do you mean Tosh? Sonic said as he impatiently tapped his foot, now in his normal attire of red shoes and white gloves. When I was with Class 1B, young Maurice was also the first one out here. All Might said with a chuckle. Well, we both agreed we didn't really need a hero costume. And I mean we are technically the same person so it kind of makes sense, Sonic pointed out. Yes, I sometimes forget that, All Might replied. So, any reports about a giant bald overweight man with a horrid mustache causing havoc from any heroes? Sonic asked with a smirk. I'm going to assume you're talking about this Eggman you've told me so much about. All Might guessed. The one and only, or, not anymore considering the last time I saw him there were two of him, Sonic corrected himself. Nothing yet so far young Sonic, but I assure you that there haven't been any reports about someone matching the description you and young Maurice gave, All Might reassured. If I hear any news, I'll make sure you two are aware. Never can be too careful Tashi, Sonic said while All Might nodded. However, Sonic was starting to get worried. If Eggman or the Eggman were transported with the two Sonics to this world then surely they would have done something or made their presence known by now right? If the Eggman aren't here then where are they? If they're back home then they could easily be taking over the world right now. I'm sure Shadow, my friends and even G.U.N. could hold him off but for how long? No, right now I can't be thinking of this. I'll talk to other Sonic and Tashi about this at home. Sonic mentality noted. All Might's and Sonic's attention was drawn to the entrance of Training Ground Beta as the rest of the class came out with their hero costumes on. They say clothes make the pros and behold ladies and gentlemen, you are the proof. 
Sonic could see many different type of costumes while already deciding that Ida's costume was his favorite where he was wearing a sleek white armor from head to toe that had exhaust pipes sticking out of the costume. Sonic had to hold back a laugh at how ridiculous Bakugo looked who had hair pieces that made it look like an explosion happened on his head while wearing two bulky gauntlets that had the design of a grenade. Sonic then quickly rushed over to Ida and Yurarika. Sonic. You're just going to wear your shoes and gloves. Ida asked surprised. Yeah, figured more stuff on me would only slow me down. And I generally like to feel the wind when I run, Sonic explained. Oh I get it. The less weight on you, then the faster you are. Eurarika said, getting the gist of it. For her hero costume, Eurarika was wearing a skin-tight black full-body suit with a pale pink design down the middle of her torso, she had circular wrist guards and was wearing wide knee-high boots with a two-piece around her belt. On her head was a white helmet with a large see-through, pink-tinted visor. Something like that, hey where's Midoriya? Sonic asked. I think he's still getting changed into his costume, Gita replied. I'm right here guys. Sonic turned around to find Midoriya in a green full-body jumpsuit with a red belt, elbow pads, knee pads, and gloves, along with red boots. He was wearing a mask that had two big green ears sticking out on the top of his head that gave him the appearance of a rabbit, he also had a wide, white respirator that made Midoriya look like he had a wide smile. Whoa Midoriya! Nice, rabbit costume! Sonic somewhat guessed. Yeah you look awesome Deku. Not too flashy you know. Yurarika complimented. Midoriya only stood there flustered and speechless as he took in Yurarika's costume while Yurarika talked about how tight her costume was without noticing Midoriya's shocked and flustered expression. I love this school, a short boy with purple ball for hair made himself known. But what was strange to Sonic was that the kid was facing and talking to no one. Uh who are you talking to? Now that you're ready. It's time for combat training. All Might announced gaining the class's attention. Sir, this is the fake city from our entrance exam. Does that mean we will be conducting urban battles again? Ida questioned. Not quite. I'm going to move you two steps ahead, All Might replied while holding up two fingers. Most of the villain fights you see on the news take place outside. However, statistically speaking run-ins with the most dastardly evil doers take place indoors. Ha, huh, he's got a point. Most of the time I get into a battle with Eggman it's usually in one of his military labs or some other crazy place. Sonic thought with a nod. Think about it. Backroom deals, home invasions, secret underground lairs. Truly intelligent criminals stay hidden in the shadows. For this training exercise you'll be split into teams of good guys and bad guys and fight two-on-two -two battles. All Might stated to the class. And Ridbit sounded from the crowd, isn't this a little too advanced? A girl dressed up in a frog costume asked. The best training is what you get on the battlefield. All Might replied enthusiastically. Sir, will you be the one deciding who wins? The girl with a black ponytail asked. How much can we hurt the other team? Bakugo asked with a malicious grin. Do we need to worry about the losers getting expelled like earlier? Yurarika asked concerned. Will you be splitting us up based on competitive skill or just chance? Ida asked from the back of the class. Isn't this Cape Tra, S. Chic? The blonde French boy with a stomach laser quirk randomly asked. Geez guys. Let the guy breath. Sonic exclaimed. The class then settled down keeping whatever questions they had left to themselves, All Might gave a small thankful nod to Sonic before continuing on. Thank you young Sonic, in due time all your questions will be answered so listen up. All Might then pulled a script out of his pocket. The situation is this, the villains have a hidden nuclear missile somewhere in their hideout and the heroes must try to foil their plans. To do that, the good guys either have to catch the evildoers with or recover the weapon. Likewise the villains succeed if they protect their payload or capture the heroes. Time's limited. 
so we will choose teams by lots. All Might explained while holding up a yellow box. Isn't there a better way? Ida asked. Think about it. Pros often have to team up with heroes from other agencies on the spot, so maybe that's the reason we're seeing that here. Midoriya exclaimed. I see, life is a series of random events. Ida stated. Excuse my rudeness. No sweat, let's draw. One by one the class went up and drew lots, Midoriya somehow by luck happened to be teamed up with Urarika. While unfortunately Ida must have been unlucky because he got teamed up with Bakugo. Sonic reached his gloved hand through the box and pulled out a small piece of paper with the letter J on it. Anybody got a J? Sonic called out. A few seconds of silence passed before someone called back. I got a J as well. A red-haired boy exclaimed. The boy had a muscular build and red spiky hair and eyes. For his hero costume he left his chest bare, wore red gear-shaped shoulder pads, baggy black pants, and two dark red boots with multiple thick rings going around his calves. He also had a belt with a red R at the center while on his head was a wired guard reaching from his hairline to his jaw. So I guess you're my teammate then. Sonic guessed. Guess so. My name is Ijiro Kurishima. Kurishima exclaimed. Nice to meet you Kurishima. I'm Sonic the Hedgehog. I was amazed by your performance back at the quirk assessment test Sonic. And the way you stood up for Midoriya to Mr. Aizawa and protected him against Bakugo. That was so manly. Kurishima beamed. Oh, uh, thanks. Sonic responded slightly confused about the strange compliment. Before the conversation could go on All Might announced who the first two teams that would fight. I declare that the first teams to fight will be, these guys. All Might yelled as he held up two different colored ball with the letters A and D on them. Sonic quickly looked towards two Midoriya who had a look of fear on his face, Sonic felt bad for Midoriya because now he had to face off against his childhood friend slash bully Bakugo as well as Ida on top of that. Team A will be the heroes while Team D will be the villains. Everyone else can head to the monitoring room to watch. Yes, sir. As the rest of the class went inside, Sonic stood still as he kept his eyes on Midoriya who was trying to avoid Bakugo's glare. Hey Kirishima, go on ahead, I'll be there in a minute. Oh, okay, I'll see you up there Sonic. Kirishima replied before following the rest of his class. Sonic then made his way over to Midoriya passing by Bakugo without even giving him a thought. Hey! Midoriya flinched expecting Bakugo to say something but calmed down when he realized it was Sonic. Don't worry about him. I know you got this. Sonic said to him with a smile. Midoriya stared at Sonic before tightening his grip, he gave Sonic a serious nod before turning towards Bakugo's direction returning a glare, Bakugo was surprised for a split moment before he growled. Sonic smirked at him before running back to the observation room. Bakugo was appalled. The little bug had just glared back at him. It must have been because of whatever that blue BSTRD said to him. It didn't matter. If anything, this only made Bakugo laugh. So Deku wanted to act like a tough guy now huh? That was fine by Bakugo. Once this match starts he'll blow him and that new ego of his straight to hell. He'll finally get back at Deku for keeping his power hidden after all these years. And once he's done putting Deku in his place, he'll show that blue mouse who's truly on top. He'll show all these extras who the best is. Come on Bakugo, it's time we prepare. Ida spoke. Yeah, yeah, Bakugo muttered. Oh yeah, today was going to be fun. All right. Let's begin the indoor combat training. Team A and Team D, your time starts now. All Might spoke into the intercom before turning around to the rest of the class. Pay attention kids. Think about what you would do. Sonic could see on the monitor that both Midoriya and Urarika had snuck through one of the building's windows before going right down the dimly lit hallway at a steady pace, 
as Midoriya made it to a corner he put his back against the wall and peeped around, seeing everything was clear, he motioned Yurarika to move forward. After passing another corner and approaching another one, Sonic glanced at one of the other monitors and could see that Bakugo was. Oh no! Midoriya watch out! Sonic mentally screamed. Bakugo had jumped around the corner above Midoriya and was about to release an explosion with his right hand. Luckily Midoriya looked up in time and had a split second to tackle Yurarika out of the way right when Bakugo let off an explosion only scorching off half of Midoriya's mask. Phew, that was close. He almost got the jump on him. Someone from the class yelled out. Sneak attack Bakugo. What kind of man pulls cheap CRP like that? Kirishima stated while punching his hand into his palm. It's viable. He's playing the part, acting like a true villain would. It didn't work. Midoriya dodged him, the girl with pink skin pointed out. Look there he goes. Sonic quickly turned his eyes back to the monitor as Bakugo threw his right hand forward to blow his opponent up only for Midoriya to counter by grabbing his arm and throwing Bakugo over his shoulder and slamming him to the ground in one swift move. Yeah. You show him Midoriya. Sonic exclaimed. Bakugo slowly got up as Midoriya was saying something to him that only All Might could hear with his earpiece. Whatever he said only ticked Bakugo off more as he let off two explosions behind him for a boost of speed towards Midoriya before sending a high maneuver kick that Midoriya blocked with his arms, as Yurarika ran away to find the weapon Midoriya used the capture tape that was given to wrap it around Bakugo's leg that he blocked. Bakugo then made another explosion at him but Midoriya predicted it and dodged out of the way. Wow he's doing good. And he hasn't even used his quirk yet. Someone from the crowd said. You're doing great Midoriya. Show Boom Boy how it's done. Sonic called out. As the smoke cleared, Bakugo was ready to engage again but Midoriya then ran down the hallway away from him. Bakugo then yelled before chasing after him. After multiple failed attempts at finding him. Bakugo then let out his frustration by ranting. That guy has some real anger issues. Kinda scary. The boy with a black highlighted lightning bolt on his hair said. Tell me about it. Sonic replied. While Bakugo continued to search for Midoriya, Yurarika had found the weapon and Ida guarding it. She accidentally revealed herself around the corner by laughing at how Ida was talking to himself acting like a villain. Ida then explained how he got rid of all the objects in the room so there would be nothing for her to use her zero gravity on while giving an evil laugh as Yurarika just stood there awkwardly watching. With six minutes left on the clock Bakugo finally found Midoriya who was in a stance with capture tape in hand, Bakugo then raised his hand towards him before reaching for the pin on his gauntlet. Sonic's eyes widened realizing what it actually is. Wait a second. That thing is a weapon. All Might turned to Sonic before yelling into the intercom. Young Bakugo. Don't do it. You'll kill him. Not listening to him, Bakugo pulled the pin before a flash of light appeared being followed up by the whole hallway being consumed by an explosion that engulfed Midoriya. The explosion ended up destroying part of the building and even made the observation room shake. Whoa. This is nuts. Kirishima exclaimed. Is Midoriya okay? Sonic asked worried. Come in. Come in young Midoriya. Midoriya was now on his knees and hands panting trying to catch his breath, the costume his mother made him was now almost completely destroyed from the blast. Izuku quickly crawled away before standing back up to face his opponent. Why won't you use your DMN quirk against me? Still think you can stop me without it? Bakugo questioned with growing anger. You've been hiding your true power for years. Did you think you were better than me this entire time? Face it Deku, no matter what power you have. You'll never beat me. Midoriya only looked down at the floor, he's right, I can't beat him. If I use my quirk I'll only break. I can't do this. Midoriya thought as he closed his eyes to hold back the tears. Don't worry about him. 
I know you got this. Midoriya eyes widened remembering Sonic's words. The same Sonic who he thought was so cool. The same Sonic who had saved him multiple times from danger. The same Sonic who was his friend. No, Sonic's right, I can do this. Izuku stood up with shaky legs, you're wrong Kaken. Bakugo stopped as Midoriya spoke, I know that you're better than me. Can't you see? That's why I want to beat you. Because you're amazing. Come at me. Bakugo yelled back. The two then charged at each other with no holding back from each other. As both of them brought their right fist back, Izuku's arm glowed as red lines protruded around his arm destroying his sleeve while Bakugo was about to use his quirk as miniature explosions popped on his hand. They're going to kill each other sir. Kurishima exclaimed as All Might was having an inner conflict on if he should stop the match or not. Wait a sec Kurishima. Sonic said as his partner turned to him. He had seen that look that was on Midoriya's face before. I think Midoriya is up to something. As the two fists were about to collide with each other, Midoriya yelled into his communicator. Eurarika now. After receiving a response from her Midoriya brought his arm last second into an uppercut motion. Smaasa Ash. Midoriya's uppercut missed Bakugo but was so powerful that the air around it cracked and the air pressure destroyed every single floor above them until it flew through the roof into the sky. On the floor with the bomb, Ida was holding onto the bomb to stop himself from being blown away while Eurarika was holding onto a piece of floating Debra. WH what's happening? Ida shouted in shock. While Ida was in bewilderment of the situation, Eurarika took her chance. Sorry Ida. Improvised special move. The Comet home run. Eurarika grabbed onto a pillar and using her quirk used it like a baseball bat to hit pieces of floating debris at Ida. In the name of villainy, I demand you stop this. Ida exclaimed as he braced for unknown to Ida Eurarika had only used that as a distraction as she used her quirk to jump over Ida and onto the bomb officially ending the battle. I got it. Eurarika exclaimed. No. The weapon. Ida yelled in fear. The hero team wins. Sonic drew a sigh of relief. I knew you could do it buddy. Sonic could see Midoriya had passed out while Bakugo could only stand there in shock not moving a muscle while on another monitor Eurarika was puking her lunch out with Ida at her side rubbing her back. Well despite the results, the MVP of this exercise is, young Ida. Most of the students gasped especially Ida who he, Eurarika and an out of it looking Bakugo were back in the observation room at the results. Shouldn't it be one of the heroes because they won? The girl with the frog quirk pondered. Valid question. Why didn't I choose one of those two? He stroked his chin. Who has the guess? Sir. I can tell you why. Sonic's eyes flew over to a girl with long black hair out in a ponytail who was wearing a questionable revealing outfit. Ida embraced this challenge, he was the only one who truly adapted to his assigned role, Bakugo's judgment was clouded by a personal grudge against Midoriya. As you pointed out earlier, launching a large-scale attack was a foolish move that ended up only causing collateral damage. Similarly Midoriya's plan was also poorly thought out considering the amount of damage he received. And as for Eurarika. She let her guard down mid-battle and her final attack was far too reckless given the hypothetical stakes, if she treated the fake weapon as it were real she would have never have used a imprecise move. Ida on the other hand was fully prepared for his opponent's arrival, he had a strategy, and never lost sight of his mission. Technically the hero team won, yes. But they took advantage that this was training. They didn't respect the spirit of the trial. Sonic and the rest of the class looked at her in awe. She's, perspective. Sonic thought. Well young Momo, you overlooked a few things, Ida could have been a little more relaxed during the training but otherwise you nailed it. All Might said giving a thumbs up. The next match came and went which really surprised Sonic, 
the match ended quickly thanks to a half-white and half-red-haired kid with a really bad scar over his left eye. He ended up freezing the entire building completely incapacitating his opponents, it was so cold that it could even be felt from the observation room. To Sonic it felt like there was something more to that kid then he let on. A alright why why young Sonic A and Kurishima, you're you up next against Team H, All Might said as he shivered from the cold. Head o over to Battle Building C. You gotta teach. Are you ready for this Kurishima? Sonic exclaimed. Heck yeah I am. Let's win this and become even more manly. Kurishima exclaimed back. Sonic could only chuckle at his enthusiastic attitude. The red spiky hair and choice of coloring for his costume, the headstrong yet determined personality, it reminded Sonic of another friend he knew that was the guardian of the MSTR Emerald. Knuckles. Another friend he missed dearly. Say Kurishima, I never got to ask but what's your quirk? Oh. Well it's not flashy but I still think it's pretty cool for what it is, Kurishima then lifted his hand before it suddenly gained a jagged and sturdy shape, almost like that of a rock in the shape of a hand. Whoa. What happened to your hand? Sonic asked in disbelief. My quirk is called hardening. It allows me to harden any part of my body as strong as stone. Kurishima explained before turning his hand back to normal. All I gotta say is that is awesome. Sonic exclaimed. Thanks man. So this is the bomb we have to guard. Sonic asked as he knocked the pretend nuke they were guarding, the clanging reverberating off the walls of the makeshift construction building they were in. Pretty much yeah. Gotta say playing the villain is new territory for me, considering I'm always the hero, Sonic stated. Huh? What do you mean? Kurishima asked a bit confused. Huh? Sonic quickly realized he slip up. Oh. I mean I was always the hero in games when I played with other kids as a child, Sonic quickly came up with a lie. Ah uh, I see. Makes sense with that quirk of yours, Kurishima said nodding his head. Okay heroes and villains. Your time starts now. All Might announced on the intercom. All right you wouldn't happen to know anything about our opponents would ya? Sonic asked. Well from what I've seen so far, Tsuyu Azui's quirk is frog related but I don't know to what extent. And that Tokoyami guy's quirk is probably bird related, considering the, well, bird head. Kurishima chuckled. Heh. I guess that makes you the only person here without any animalistic features then, Sonic pointed out while Kurishima replied with a shrug. Suddenly out of the dimly lit corridor came a long tongue that wrapped around Sonic's legs. What the? Before Sonic could react the tongue pulled and he fell to the ground before being dragged across the floor into the dark corridor from which the tongue came from. Sonic. Kurishima called out, reaching out towards his teammate but failed to reach him on time. Sonic was being dragged through the dimly lit corridor before being lifted up off the ground dangling upside down. Sonic looked up to find big eyes staring back down at him, the girl was wearing a frog-inspired costume that had googles on the top of her forest green hair that gave a frog-like appearance. She was sticking up on the ceiling and had her long tongue wrapped around Sonic's legs. Keep hold of him Tsuyu. I'll handle the rest, Sonic looked to his left to find from his point of view, a upside down Tokoyami, who was wearing a black cloak around his body only leaving his raven head visible. If he slips from your grasp, it'll only spell disaster for us, Tokoyami said as he walked forward presumably to Kurishima's position. Got it, asterisk rib bit asterisk. Now this is just playing dirty, Sonic complained. Tokoyami took a temporary pause in his stride to look over his shoulder at Sonic. Who said anything about playing fair? Sonic frowned at the raven-headed boy before noticing something behind Tokoyami. You know, I can't let you get away that easy, Sonic gave a sly smirk. Tokoyami stopped and turned fully around to Sonic, oh. And how will you stop me while dangling upside down? Tokoyami asked with his own smirk. That's simple, my teammate. 
Tsuyu glanced behind Tokoyami before gasping, Tokoyami look out. Before he could turn around Tokoyami was tackled from behind by Kirishima. Forgot about me. Tsuyu now being distracted by the new arrival unintentionally loosened her grip on Sonic with her tongue. Sonic noticing this put all of his strength into moving legs which made him slip out of her grasp. Now we're talking. Tsuyu attempted to recatch Sonic with her tongue but this time Sonic was ready for it. Sonic swiftly dodged it before doing a homing attack on Tsuyu, he slammed against Tsuyu into the ceiling that she was already sticking to. They both fell down with the blue hedgehog landing more gracefully than the other. Meanwhile with Kurishima, he was on top of Tokoyami pinning him to the floor before attempting to reach behind him for the capture tape they were given. Dark Shadow Attack Suddenly out Tokoyami's sides, came out two large purple black ghostly arms with claws that latched onto Kurishima before throwing him off into a wall. I did not see that coming, Kurishima mumbled as he shook his head from the dizziness. Kurishima looked up to find a being made up of pure darkness in the shape of a bird with large arms and claws with menacing glowing yellow eyes, the being was connected to Tokoyami through a tendril. Whoa! Kurishima muttered. With Sonic, the blue blur was swiftly dodging Tsuyu's tongue strikes, after dodging another one Sonic ran up the wall and around the ceiling to the other wall before skidding to a stop behind the frog girl. Before she could turn around, Sonic jumped up and did a light roundhouse on Tsuyu's back that sent her forward, she regained her balance before turning back to Sonic and shooting her tongue at him only for Sonic to stop it by catching it with his hand. Out of everyone here, you would probably be Big's favorite, Sonic commented. Tsuyu looked at him confused and before she could ask him who this big person was, Sonic rushed forward and around her with her tongue in hand at fast speeds using it to wrap around her to entangle and trap her. Tsuyu looked around dazed, one second the blue hedgehog was in front of her and the next she was trapped in her own tongue. Dang it rib bit. Sonic then turned to Kirishima's and Tokoyami's battle and was surprised to find a hardened Kirishima blocking attacks from a purple ghost bird with yellow eyes. Sonic could see that the ghost bird was connected to Tokoyami through a tendril who had his back turned to Sonic. Hey bird brain! Tokoyami turned to Sonic only to be drop kicked by the blue hedgehog and be sent sprawling onto the floor. The dark shadow bird saw this and it was as if it only became matter, it swiped away Kirishima before charging at Sonic. It furiously slashed at the blue blur with its claws only to meet failure every time at hitting him. Strike 1. Sonic exclaimed as he ducked under a swipe. Strial 2. Sonic sidestepped another attack. And Striaikiki 3. Sonic exclaimed as he jumped over a claw and while Midair kicked the ghost bird in the face. Arg do you ever shut up? Whoa! You can talk! Sonic asked, stunned at the shadow bird. Yes. Now stop moving and die. Hmm let me think about it. Sonic said as he continued dodging. Okay. I thought about it. And, Sonic began as he back flipped over an attack. I. Sonic kicked away the shadow bird's claw. Pass. Sonic then boosted forward with a blue aura appearing in front of him before he slammed into Dark Shadow. In turn the force sent the ghost bird into a pillar where it sprawled on the floor knocked out. Dark Shadow no. Tokoyami yelled out before out of nowhere. Kirishima hardened his fist and sent it into Tokoyami's gut knocking the air out of him. Kirishima then swiftly brought Tokoyami to the ground before tying him up with the capture tape. The heroes have been captured. The villains win. Sorry about tangling you with your own tongue, I was kinda in a rush to help my teammate out, Sonic apologized as he helped the frog quirked girl untangle herself from her own tongue. The frog girl retracted her tongue into her mouth, it's alright, you were only doing what you had to do ribbit. I guess so, the name's Sonic by the way. Yours is Azui right? Sonic asked. Yes but please, call me Tsuyu, she insisted as she retracted her now untangled tongue back into her mouth. You got it Tsuyu. Sonic exclaimed. Hero and villain teams. 
you may report back to us. All Might spoke through the speaker. Well we should get back, it was nice meeting you Sonic Ribbit, Tsuyu said as she walked or hopped away. Sonic waved by to her, before he could walk back to the observation room he spotted Tokayami, hey. Tokayami. No strong feelings right? Tokayami stared at the blue hedgehog before grunting something and then walked away. Eh he'll get over it, Sonic shrugged. Sonic then met up with Kurishima, both sharing a high five over their victory before walking back to the observation room. Good job teams. The four of you did an amazing job on your roles. Now who can tell me who was the MVP of this match? All Might questioned the class. An hand immediately shot up, that being of the black-haired girl who analyzed Midoriya's and Bakugo's match, Momo Yayorozu. All Might Sensei, I believe the MVP was Tsuyu Azui. Really? How come? Tsuyu asked in surprise. Yu Tsuyu had thought smart in taking out or containing the most powerful and dangerous opponent on the battlefield that being Sonic and as well as hiding in the dark out of sight, with the only flaw I saw from you was you losing your hold on Sonic. Now for the reasons on why I didn't pick the other three. Starting with Tokoyami, Tokoyami let himself get distracted with Sonic which caused him to let his guard down and get surprised by Kurishima as well as letting his anger or more specifically, his quirk's anger in getting in the way of winning. With Kurishima, I was debating if he was the MVP or not but came to the conclusion that he wasn't because of one small error he made, which was him leaving the bomb unprotected. Heh, you got me there. Probably wasn't the best idea, Kurishima chuckled while scratching the back of his head nervously. She nodded, and finally with Sonic, Sonic wasn't taking this whole training seriously. Having multiple chances to easily take down the heroes but chose not to. These battles are for us to test our abilities and skill at working with others. Which is what really matters here. Not giving off a performance, Momo finally finished. Can't ever please a critic can you? Sonic muttered under his breath, but he must have muttered too loudly because he was then at the receiving end of a sharp glare from the high-class student which made Sonic give out an apologetic chuckle. Well done young Yairozu. Once again you show that you have a good eye on you. All Might praised. Of course All Might Sensei. The rest of the matches went on with some being completely one-sided while some had the stakes high. Sonic had decided that after the mock battles he was going to visit Midoriya who had been sent to Recovery Girl's office after his battle with Bakugo. Two hours later. That's a wrap. Super work. You all really stepped up to the plate. And we didn't have any major injuries except Midoriya. You should be proud. Excellent first day of training, all around. All Might congratulated. It's nice to hear some encouraging words after our homeroom class, Tsuyu spoke up. Mr. Aizawa was kind of a buzz kill, Tsuyu said while the rest of the class nodded their heads in agreement. I'm happy to bring such staggering positivity. But that's all for now folks. I should go check on young Midoriya's progress. Now watch how a pro exists. Like he has somewhere to be. All Might yelled out as he ran off leaving behind a gust of wind that left the class in awe. Okay you guys, that is a pro hero. A boy with an electric quirk named Kaminari said in awe. Man I'll never run that fast, a boy with a tail quirk named Ojiro said sadly. I don't think anyone can. Super awesome. A small boy with purple ball on his hair named Mineta exclaimed. Wait. All Might. I'm going to come too. Sonic called out before taking off after the symbol of peace leaving behind his own gust of wind. You uh I guess except for Sonic, Kaminari said stooped while the rest of the class deadpanned. Izuku had woken up sore all around his body mainly in his right arm which was in a cast while his left had an four going through it. It was safe to say he wasn't feeling like sunshine and rainbows. When he had woken up, Recovery Girl had given him a lecture about not to push himself too strong so she wouldn't have to see him as a regular patient. 
Midoriya quickly apologized and promised he would be easier and more careful on himself next time. But if was being honest with himself he wasn't sure how long that promise was going to last. Midoriya was still resting in Recovery Girl's office as Recovery Girl instructed, with not much to do. Izuku glanced at the clock. Huh, the mock battles should be through right about now, I wonder if Recovery Girl will let me go so I can make it to my afternoon classes. Mr. Aizawa would be really mad if I didn't make it. Midoriya gulped at the thought in fear. Before Izuku could think or do anything else. The door to Recovery Girl's room busted open revealing a tired out All Might with steam coming off him. A All Might? Midoriya asked in surprise. Before All Might could reply, he became a poof of smoke and turned back into his skinny form. Ak, Aya young Midoriya, I see you're already awake, you did great my boy. Tashinori said as he coughed up BLD. All Might there you are. I've got a bone to pick with you. Why didn't you stop this child from overexerting himself? Recovery Girl questioned sternly. Tashinori winced, eh sorry recovery girl but I had to show young Midoriya that he had the strength in him to win. He explained. He never liked it when recovery girl was mad at him, she could be quite the scary old lady. Come on all might, I know you gave this boy your powers but you can't spoil him you know. W wait, recovery girl knows about one for all. Midoriya asked, pretty stunned at this revelation. Yes. She and a few select other pro heroes and individuals know about it, but I want the number of people who know about it to stay as little as possible so could you please stop talking about it so loudly. Tashinori turned his attention back to Recovery Girl. Yeah, yeah I get it Mr. Symbol of Peace. Recovery Girl nonchalantly responded. As Tashinori shook his head, the doorknob to Recovery Girl's room started to turn, both Izuku and Tashinori looked at the door in fear of Tashinori's secret getting out because Tashinori still had his now disheveled costume on. The door now fully opened, revealed Sonic who was now walking in while holding a bunch of papers, Tashinori had a look of relief on his face while Izuku had a look of terror on his. Hey Midoriya. How are you feeling after that big fight you had? Sonic asked, kicking the door closed with his foot as he walked over to his bed. S. Sonic. I, I can explain why All Might looks like that. Midoriya stated frantically. Don't worry man I already know. Izuku stared at Sonic debating with himself if he heard him right. W.H. what? Yeah I kind of already know about the whole All Might getting weaker thing and him passing on his quirk to you thing as well, Sonic nonchalantly stated. Ah really? But how? Midoriya exclaimed. Oh you're going to find this funny, All Might do you want to tell him? Sonic asked Tashinori. Huh? Tashinori looked at Sonic in shock. What was he supposed to say? He wanted to tell Izuku the truth, but Tashinori didn't think he was ready yet. Sonic jerked his head forward to Midoriya, motioning for Tashinori to go on. Ah uh, yes yeah, sure, ah uh, hum you see. One day a couple weeks ago I was reaching too close to my limit and was about to change back into this form, so I was a uh, trying to run into a nearby ally way to transform but unfortunately I had a uh, tripped. Tripped over myself and changed back before I could make it. And it happened that young Sonic and young Maurice were passing by and saw the whole thing transpire. All Might explained the made-up story to Izuku with nervous sweat going down his brow. H. He tripped over himself. Really? And Maurice knows too. Midoriya mentally screamed. Tashinori then got kicked in his foot by Recovery Girl which made him yelp out of pain and hop on his leg holding his foot which had surprised Sonic because he didn't even notice she was here. Really all might. How reckless and irresponsible can you be? If you're not going to be more careful then you might as well scream your secret out to the whole world. Recovery Girl scolded the pro hero. Eh sorry. I'll be more careful next time, and that hurt. Tashinori complained. Recovery Girl only responded with a humph before going back to work on her computer. Sonic shook his head at what happened, well anyways how are you feeling man? Sonic asked his previous question again. 
Midoriya who was still in shock of Sonic knowing his secret shook his head of those thoughts, I I am feeling okay, recovery girl said I should be up and running by tomorrow so I'll be good. That's good to hear. Oh. And when I was on my way, I ran into Aizawa and he told me to give these assignments to you because you won't make it to class. But what kind of teacher gives homework to an injured student? Sonic complained as he handed Midoriya his work. Oh, T thank you Sonic. Well young Sonic, you should run along now back to class before Aizawa loses his head at the fact you were late, Tashinori spoke. Right and he also told me to get changed back into uniform before I come back as well. I'll see y'all around. Sonic waved off before running out of recovery girl's office. After more boring classes and waiting with the rest of the class for Midoriya only for him to run after Bakugo for an unknown reason. Both Sonic and Classic Sonic were at the dinner table eating chili dogs with a side of ramen because Tashinori had suggested it and said it was great. Both hedgehogs had tried it out and thought it was good but of course not on the same level of chili dogs. Sonic in particular had wanted to talk to Tashinori for his opinion on if him and Classic Sonic should attempt to use the Chaos Emeralds to try and return to their world. This thought had been eating him up since the beginning of the mock battles because according to Tashinori, no sightings or reports of either egg men have come in. Which left a bad feeling in Sonic's stomach that they were still back on his and Classic Sonic's world doing who knows what. Um, hey Toshi, can I ask for your opinion on something? Sonic spoke up gaining the attention of Tashinori. Hmm. Of course young Sonic, what is it? Tashinori responded. Well. I've been thinking. I think we should attempt to use the emeralds to return to our world. Sonic stated. Tashinori and Classic Sonic looked at Sonic in surprise, wait, you're able to do that. Well sometimes, if you have all seven or even one Chaos Emerald then you can do a technique called, Chaos Control, Sonic explained. Chaos Control. Tashinori repeated in wonder. Chaos Control is able to warp space and time and can even let you travel to other worlds if you have all seven emeralds, Sonic stated while Classic Sonic only looked at his future self in awe. For Classic Sonic he didn't even know what Chaos Control was. He had yet to discover it since he's only used the emeralds a few times. Let alone he could travel to other worlds with the emeralds. So why haven't you both tried to go back yet? Tashinori asked. Well, me and Maurice feel like it wouldn't be right to just leave like that after the kind hospitality you showed us these past months. Sonic said with a saddened tone in his voice while classic Sonic lowered his head in shame. Ah, I see, you both feel guilty. Tashinori came to the conclusion. Why yeah? Tashinori hummed to himself in thought before remembering something, young Sonic, Maurice, may I tell you both something? Tashinori spoke. Of course Toshi. Anything. Sonic replied as classic Sonic nodded his head. You see my old master's name was Nana Shimura and she happened to be the user of one for all before me, Tashinori began. Really? Did that mean she was crazy strong? Sonic asked. Very. Tashinori said with a chuckle, but despite that Sonic still noticed the look of sorrow on his face like if talking about his MSTR was a touchy subject. She was an amazing hero as well as an amazing person. And when she was training me she would always tell me that a hero is where they are needed. So, if you both truly believe you should return to your home world then I will not hold that against you. Tashinori said to Sonic with a smile. Both of you, Tashinori glanced towards classic Sonic. Wow, so you wouldn't be mad at us? Sonic asked. Of course not young Sonic. You're only worried about the people you care for back on your world from getting hurt by this Eggman you mentioned right? That is the essence of a true hero my boys. Tashinori beamed brightly. Right. And the next time I see the old egg head then me and Maurice are going to turn him into a scrambled egg. Sonic exclaimed as he high-fived classic Sonic. Heh, well if you both do plan on leaving then I think it's only fair for you both to tell your classmates the truth, 
especially Midoriya. I know you two are close young Sonic, or would you like me to do it for you both? Tashinori offered. No that's okay, that's something we have to do, Sonic said with classic Sonic agreeing with his future self. I was thinking, we could probably stay on this world for a few more days before we attempt to return home with the Chaos Emeralds. Sonic suggested to Classic Sonic as they walked to U.A. Classic Sonic happily agreed by nodding his head, both of the Sonics greatly missed their friends back home, but they still wanted to spend some more time with the friends they made here before they leave. And besides the Chaos Emeralds have been collecting dust in that closet these past few months we've been in this universe anyway so it's probably about time we use them. Sonic continued on. Tashi is right though. We need to tell the truth to our classmates before we leave, it's just I don't know how we're going to explain all of this to them, got any ideas other me? Sonic asked, by now Sonic had started walking backwards in front of Classic Sonic just as Yudare was on the other side of the street. Classic Sonic shrugged his shoulders showing that he was stooped as well, and another thing, when we do get back, we still need to find a way to return you to the paw, oof. Sonic who was still walking backwards accidentally bumped into someone. Whoa. Sorry man. I wasn't paying attention. Sonic looked up to find a slim man wearing a black sweater of some sorts with long disheveled and messy teal colored hair. Both Sonic and the man made eye contact for a few seconds, but in those few seconds Sonic could make out chapped and scarred lips and BLD red eyes behind that messy hair, Sonic could even swear he saw a few scars below his tired eyes. Watch where you're going kid, the unknown man hissed in a raspy voice before walking away with his hands tucked in his pants. To the blue hedgehog it sounded like the man hadn't drunk any water in days. Who the heck was that guy? Sonic questioned himself. Sonic watched the man walk away before turning to classic Sonic who had watched what just happened, let's get going Maurice, his past self nodded but he also had a look of concern on his face. Both of the hedgehogs crossed the street and could clearly see a horde of reporters at the front gates demanding for all might. But Sonic didn't comment on the reporters as his thoughts were still on that suspicious man, when Sonic made eye contact with the man. He could feel something sinister inside of those eyes. While walking across the street Sonic turned his back to see if he could spot the guy which he did, the sketchy guy had only walked a couple feet from where Sonic bumped into him. But that's not what ticked Sonic off, it was when Sonic could see that the guy was clearly now watching both hedgehogs from afar. Classic Sonic noticed Sonic looking back and tapped on his shoulder as they now reached the other side of the street. H huh? Oh, sorry buddy. It's just that there's something extremely off about that guy and I don't like it. Sonic motioned across the street. Classic Sonic could see the guy still staring at them but couldn't see his eyes because of his messy hair in the way. But Classic Sonic agreed. There was something definitely off about that guy. But never mind him, let's just find a way to get past these reporters. Sonic said as they approached the paparazzi. Both Sonics were now right behind the reporters who were still demanding to see All Might. We want All Might. Our viewers want to know how good of a teacher is All Might. Just give us All Might. Excuse us. Just trying to get through. Sonic called out as both he and Classic Sonic squeezed through the crowd. Hey. You too. What can you tell us about All Might? A female reporter asked to the two hedgehogs, shoving a mic into Sonic's face. Real nice guy. Would love to stay and chat but we got places to be. Sonic called back as they were almost about to reach the U. A gate. Hey wait a second, aren't those two the two blue blurs that stopped that sludge villain a while back? A random reporter asked. Yeah. I think they are. CRP that's our K. Make a break for it Maurice. Sonic yelled out as both Sonics ran past the gate and into Udate exposing their speed to the reporters. IT is them. After them. A multitude of reporters. Began to run inside but before they could fully enter. 
Yu.A's defenses activated as large steel walls popped out of the ground and surrounded Yu.A blocking off the reporters from entering. Both Sonic stopped running and drew a sigh of relief as they saw the defenses activate. Phew, that was a close one. Sonic drew a sigh of relief, Classic Sonic couldn't deny that. When class began for the two hedgehogs in both class, 1A and 1B. Both Aizawa and Vlad King made the classes choose who their class's class representative should be. Both Sonics didn't really care for that type of stuff so they used this time to get some shut eye, or tried to anyway over the constant yelling and arguing. It was only when the bell rang when Sonic woke up and learned Ida had been voted for his class while in 1B Classic Sonic learned that the redhead girl Kendo was voted. But now it was the Sonic's favorite time of the day. Lunch. Wow so your family must be super rich. Urarika beamed. And famous. Pony also jumped in. I wouldn't want to sound like I'm bragging but yes they are. Ida proclaimed. My elder brother, the Turbo Hero Ingenium is an unmatched general who upholds the hero code, I inspire to be just like him. So cool. Midoriya, Urarika, Pony exclaimed. I understand what you mean Ida. I want to be just like my mom. Pony exclaimed. Oh yeah, your mother is a pro hero too from the states right Pony? Ida asked. Emichim. She is so cool. And I want to be just like her when I become a pro hero. Pony gushed on. We all have someone in our lives we strive to be like, so let's do our best and reach our goals and make them proud. Ida exclaimed. Yeah. The whole table yelled out besides classic Sonic for obvious reasons. Say Ida do you think dash, Sonic began before suddenly he was cut off by a blaring alarm. Huh. What is that? Midoriya yelled out. No clue. Sonic said as classic Sonic looked around in confusion while the students around them started to get up and run somewhere. Warning. Level 3 Security Breach An announcer came onto the intercom. Security Breach Sonic exclaimed. No way. Pony said in shock. All students evacuate the building in an orderly fashion, the announcer went on. What does Level 3 Security Breach mean? Urarika asked with a bit of fear. It means someone got past the school barrier. We should go. A student nearby explained before running off. Someone broke in. Sonic asked surprised. I don't know but we should leave. Ida advised. It was worse from there, the halls were packed with scared fleeing students trying to get out of the building, Sonic and his friends were getting crushed in between students. This is an absolute nightmare. Sonic shouted as he got hit in the face by a random student's knees. Ow. This is a total mob. Urarika said as she was stuck in between Ida and another student everyone was quick to react. As I expect from you Dada students. Sure, but they're also causing a huge panic. Midoriya exclaimed. So how do we stop it? Ow. Pony yelled out as she got pushed into a wall, classic Sonic who was on Pony's shoulder was trying to hold on so he wouldn't fall and get trampled because of his small size. Good thinking Maurice. Sonic take my hand. Ida yelled out attempting to reach Sonic between the loads of students, with some struggle Sonic grabbed Ida hand which Ida then put the blue hedgehog on top of his shoulders. Thanks Ida. Does anybody even know where the intruder is? Sonic called out. No. But even if we did there wouldn't be much we can do. Midoriya called back. Midoriya's right. If the intruder came to us now we wouldn't be able to use our quirks to fight him or her off without breaking the law. Ida said as he was pushed into a window with Sonic on top of him. At that moment both Sonic and Ida looked out the window and saw the intruder. It was the paparazzi. You've got to be kidding me. Both Ida and Sonic shouted at the same time. WH what is it? Ah. Urarika yelped out as she was almost pushed to the ground. 
Ida grunted, T the intruder is the reporters from earlier. Are really? Midoriya asked in disbelief. Yeah. We need to somehow tell everyone that everything will be okay. Sonic called out. Well we need to figure out something fast. I, I, can barely breathe in here. Pony yelled while Classic Sonic was attempting to push the other students away with his shoes to give Pony some room. Sonic was starting to think before an imaginary light bulb appeared over his head. Maurice. Follow me and do what I do. Sonic then hopped off Ida onto another student and did the same thing over and over again getting a couple of pows. And, Hayes. Maurice watched his future self with a smirk before hopping off Pony and begun to do the same thing. Both Sonic started to hope on top of everyone's heads gaining each person's attention, they hopped on the railing in front of and above everyone's heads. Listen up everyone. Everything is A-OK. -okay. It's just a bunch of annoying reporters that breached the school. See the police are here. Sonic yelled out to the crowd while pointing to the window. Everyone started to calm down as they watched the reporters get apprehended by the police, the students then began to either walk back to lunch or just went to their next class. Good thinking Sonic. That was a smart idea. Ida praised. Yeah. It was also pretty funny to see you both hoping on everyone's head. Pony laughed. It was no problem. Nothing me and my little buddy can't handle, Sonic smiled as he rubbed the top of his younger self's head. Well lunch is practically over so we should get going to class, Ida said. Ah man, I didn't even get to eat my chili dog, Sonic moaned as he patted his growling stomach. Nizu, the principal of UA was standing outside at the front gate of U.A with three other faculty members. Nizu stood not just puzzled but worried as he examined the destroyed wall in front of them with his hand behind his back. This destroyed wall being on how the reporters got in. Who could have caused this? Was this the doing of the reporters? Midnight asked in shock. The entrance wall of U.A which would rise from the ground and act as defense if anyone were to cross if they didn't have a student or faculty badge was completely destroyed. Disintegrated even. But by who? How could someone take down a wall that was designed to tank nuclear blasts? Nizu stood silent in thought. It made sense why Midnight would think that. Reporters were like moths drawn to a light. Drawn to anything that had potential to be a story. In this case All Might was that light. And Nizu wouldn't expect anything less from those vultures. But something wasn't adding up for Nizu. Would the reporters really risk their jobs and going to jail for destruction of property just to get to All Might? He didn't think so. I don't believe that's the case Midnight, Nizu spoke as the three turned to him. I think this was caused by someone else, a villain perhaps. A pro hero who looked much like an astronaut stepped up, are you sure Nizu? She asked. For once I'm not entirely sure 13. If this was a villain, did they do this to infiltrate the school? If so why? He stepped forward, bending down and picking up a piece of rubble while he played with it in his hand. This villain might also be sending a message. Perhaps a show of power. Or maybe. A declaration of war. The next day came and so far it was going much smoother than the previous day. No hordes of reporters at the front of the school, no false alarms, and no sketchy men standing creepily from across the school. Sonic had a feeling today was going to be a good day. Today's hero training will be a little different, Aizawa began from the front of the class. You'll have three instructors, me, All Might and another faculty member will be keeping tabs on you. Sir. What kind of training is this? Ciro asked out loud. Rescue. You'll be dealing with natural disasters, shipwrecks, stuff like that, Aizawa explained. Disasters? And, wait, shipwrecks? Does that mean there will be water involved? Sonic fearfully thought. Finally I'll be able to show off how good I am in water. Rib bit, Tsuyu croaked happily. Sonic gulped. I'm not done yet. 
Aizawa cut the class's excitement off. What you wear in this exercise is totally up to you, I know you're excited about costumes but keep in mind you haven't got used to them yet and they might limit your abilities, Aizawa stated as he pressed a button and out popped the class's costumes from the wall. This training takes place at an off-campus facility so we'll be taking a bus to get there, Aizawa stated before leaving the classroom. Hurry up and get ready, as everyone got up to grab their costumes, Sonic was still glued to his seat at the fear of water. Maybe today won't be a good day. Everyone was now in front of the bus in their hero costumes. Sonic was back to just wearing his red shoes and gloves, but he was noticeably quieter than usual. Where he would usually be socializing with his friends or messing around with Bakugo. He was standing in the back silent. Aizawa counted this as a blessing from God. Sonic could see Ida blowing a whistle trying to get the class on the bus in an orderly fashion while Midoriya was wearing his Pete clothes because his suit got destroyed. Soon the entire class got on the bus and began to head their way to the Unforeseen Simulation Joint or USJ for short, which was the name of the off-training site they would be training at. Sonic was sitting in between Kurishima and Tsuyu with Midoriya on the other side of her and the Sugar Quirk user Sato next to Midoriya, across from Sonic was the stomach quirk French boy Aoima who had an obsession with being sparkly and shiny, next to him was the electric boy Kaminari, and on the other side of Aoima was the happy, bubbly pink skinned girl with horns, Mina, who ironically reminded Sonic of Amy, and next to her was a sulking Ida who was complaining about not loading the bus. Efficiently. Tsuyu then went on talking about how similar Izuku and All Might's quirks were which made Midoriya panic a bit, but the idea was shut down by Kurishima who said All Might unlike Midoriya doesn't get hurt by his quirk. Izuku gave a sigh of relief. My naval laser has the perfect combination of panache and strength. Aoyoma beamed. But it's way lame if it gives you a stomachache sweetie, Mina responded putting a hand on his shoulder which destroyed a bit of Aoyama's confidence. If any of us have pro quirks, it's either Bakugo or Todoroki. Sato stated, gaining a grunt from the blonde. True but you're forgetting about the main man here. Or should I say, main hedgehog here. My buddy Sonic. Kurishima exclaimed. Ain't that right Sonic? Sonic? Kurishima asked in confusion from not getting a response. Sonic was slumped against the window before his ears twitched at the sound of his name, huh? Oh. Sorry. I didn't hear ya. Sonic apologized. Yeah, you're usually a talker Sonic. Is something wrong? Kurishima asked. Are you not feeling well? Mina cut in. No I'm fine it's just that, well how do I put this, I don't like water, Sonic admitted. The six students stared at him, water. Sato repeated. Are you afraid of getting in water? Kurishima asked as Sonic nodded his head. I didn't know you were afraid of water Sonic. Midoriya said in surprise. Yeah I'm not a great swimmer so water isn't exactly my cup of tea. Ha. You're scared of water. Ah, is the blue mouse afraid of taking a shower? Bakugo laughed from the back of the bus. So alright folks that's all for today. Stay tuned for part 4. Do subscribe, like and share for more such videos. Also check out the story in author Sonic Speed 546 on fanfiction.net. Press the bell icon to be notified first on release. See you in the next video till then goodbye.